and I'm doing it for my daughter. Good evening, everyone. For tonight, I'm going to be reading you a little story coming from 4chan out of Africa. <clears throat> a fragment from a blog of a Russian man who went on a business trip to South Africa translated for your convenience. Me and my friend had spent had to spend roughly 10 hours in Johannesburg. We asked Mikhail and he convinced some kamikaze driver to take us on a tour through the city center. We, the two retards, thought that they were exaggerating about the danger just to frighten us. We thought that they would get to the center, take a look, long good stroll through it and show everyone that Russians aren't afraid of anything. We ended up not even coming close to doing any of the things. Re reason? We nearly shat ourselves. <clears throat> The descent to Johannesburg from the plateau made the city look great, beautiful, big, modern, some skyscrapers here and there, some nice Victorian-style buildings, green lawns, blue sky. Upon actually entering the city, the picture changed drastically. It looked completely abandoned. There was no electricity. Piles of trash just lying in the streets. Burst sewer pipes flooding several spots. The only thing clear debris was the main road. The only functional electrical devices were the traffic lights, and this was the city center, the relatively safe part of the city. Prior to riding into the city, the driver pointed at my Mikhail read us a short do's and don'ts lecture. He seemed very tense, gulping often, and suspiciously looking around as he spoke. If you cunts want to survive this, do exactly as I say after we enter the city. No loud noises! Do not attract any attention. No fucking iPhones or cameras flashing through the car windows. Do not make eye contact with ghouls. That's what he called. <laughs> I'm not saying that. And no matter what happens, do not open the windows. Because suddenly a lamppost can fall and block the way. And the ghouls will fucking siege us. And remember that I have kids. So at least follow these rules for my sake. Oh, Jesus. We spent two hours riding around the city center. It was quiet enough in the bus to hear a pin drop. It was under to understand what happens to the city, a small historical flashback is needed. After the apartheid was over, a two million swarm of Africans flooded the city, opening the air of Afri African Reconquista. They were not natives, they just left their usual places in the desert and went wherever life was better. Mikhail, the guy who got us the driver, lived in Johannesburg at that time and told us the following. In the middle of an ordinary workday, something happened. The office center's doors opened and an or organized crowd of several thousand blacks rushed in, carrying their belongings in huge bags. They asked us not to pay any attention to them and to continue, continue working while they were spreading around the building and occupying every bit of territory that was available. Armchairs, stools, sofas, restrooms, and hallways. They were everywhere, happily chatting and wasting no time in taking whatever shiny things the building's original denizens had on them. The office became filled with commotion. Chickens were butchered and gutted in the hallways. Tables and audience rooms turned into cooking tables. Restrooms became bathhouses. The polite question, what's going on, was answered with, this is our home now. The subsequent less polite question, what the fuck, and a reply, it will be better for everyone. Mikhail didn't call the cops. Or, no, 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 Mikhail called the cops. Cops didn't come. They apologized explained that exactly the same thing was happening across the entire city. Then everyone who could started to quietly flee the city, headed towards the suburbs in Cape Town, while erecting barriers to block the paths. Hedges, moats, electrified fences, the last district of Janisburg where you can meet a white man nowadays, it's the Pretoria suburb. This is fucking true, actually. After a massive exodus, owners of the building started thinking of what to do. Bingo. They decided that if they switch off the electricity, water, and sewer access to the buildings, the ghouls will leave them and return to the savannah. So they switched them off. The ghouls didn't even notice. Of course, in the savannah, they had neither of these modern conveniences. Where do they shit then? I asked Mikhail. Mikhail replied that the office owners were also puzzled by this and completely shocked after they found out. You see, after invading the buildings, none of the ghouls could figure out what elevator shafts were for. Once they ripped out the doors, they spent a few days scratching their heads and spitting into the darkness until it finally occurred to them. White people are geniuses when it comes to planning, thought the ghouls, and the shafts became both toilets and garbage dumps ever since, according to Mikhail. It takes roughly 10 years for an average ghoul horde to shit up an office building to the point of completely unlivability. After that, like in good old prehistoric times, the horde migrates to new pastures occupying another building. We rode on through Johannesburg streets, glued to the car windows, devouring the scenery with our eyes. Fashionable modern houses with boarded up windows pass, by, pass us by. When we came across a rare open window, we could see fires burning inside, with ghouls lying or walking around them. Once again, according to Mikhail, a new, albeit informal, service appeared to Johannesburg. Bunches of tough guys go around offering to take the buildings back from ghouls. It happens like this. In the middle of the night, several trucks drive up to the building, and a hundred or two of armed thugs go inside. 
Quickly, they grab the sleeping ghouls and simply start throwing them out the building, trying not to wake the whole horde up. Before the hold completely comes to its senses and starts expressing its displeasure, the thugs weld shut all the doors and windows on the first floor and put up an electrified fence. After the building is cleansed and refurbished, it turns back into an office. That's how the remnants of Johannesburg's white population live and work. In the evening and during the night, they keep safe behind armored doors and private guards. In the morning, they get into their cars and quickly, without stopping, ride outside their fortresses to work. After a short, short ride through the more or less safe streets, they dive into one of the heavily guarded foxholes that leads to the underground parking garages, and that concludes their arrival to the workplace. Another funny thing I noticed, if two live buildings are nearby, they are often connected by an aerial passage at the 10th or 11th floor, so office workers can even visit each other if they want to. The only trick is to not look down. Down there is ghoul territory. The end. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. That is a crazy... <laughs> <laughs> ain't get the roll no weed, ain't get the roll no switches. I was locked up on Christmas, ain't get to see my niggas, ain't get to hold my mama.